When most people start investing their money for the first time, the first question that they ask is, what stock should I buy? Or if you're being a little bit more sophisticated, you might say, should I invest in stocks or real estate? But this is the wrong question to ask. I'll show you. See, when you're investing in money, the first thing that you have to understand is what kind of investor are you? Because investing isn't just finding the right stock. It isn't just finding a good real estate deal. Investing is how do you deploy your money in a way that's going to align with your goals and in a way that's going to give you the most return. Because if you just throw your money into a stock, it might make you money, but it might also lose you money. The same stock that loses you money can make somebody else money depending on what your strategy is. And this is why you have to know your strategy first. And that's what I want to talk about right now, because the reality is the first investment decision isn't what stock or how do I invest? It's what type of strategy do you want to use as an investor? And I generally like to think about this as two different strategies. Either you can be an active investor or you can be a passive investor. When I say active investor, I don't mean being a trader. I'm not talking about trading. I don't know how to trade. I'm not a trader. That's gambling to me. I'm not talking about flipping or trading. By active investing, I mean investing in individual companies, looking for individual real estate deals to purchase yourself and operate yourself. By active investing, I mean you're actually looking for individual investments to go out and find at a good price to purchase. Passive investing is more automated, where you don't have to really worry about it. You put in the work on the front end to find a good investment, and then you set it and forget it, and that's it. And this is where the first question you have to ask yourself is how involved do you want to be as an investor? Because some of you are weirdos like me and you might say, yeah, you know what? I like studying financials. I like reading financial statements. I like writing cash flow statements. I like reading the income statements. I like listening to earnings calls. I like looking at real estate deals. I like figuring out how I can maximize my returns. Some of you will enjoy that. Others of you are going to say, I hate that. I don't want to spend the time doing that. I'm a busy professional. I don't have time to do that. I don't want to take on that additional work. That just seems stressful for me. I just want to set it and forget it. And that is what's going to first drive the next question, which is how do you want to get paid? Because some of you are going to be like me and you're going to say, I want to get paid with cash flow. I don't really care too much about the appreciation. My goal is to stack the cash flow, slowly build up this cash flow stream where right now maybe I can make $100 a month, then $200 a month, then $500 a month, then $5,000 a month. That's the type of way you might want to get paid. Others of you might say, you know what? i rather build up this nest egg. I want to build something bigger and more aggressive. That way I can pull from this nest egg in the future. And so you got to decide, would you rather get paid with cash flow or would you rather get paid with appreciation? And then once you understand these things, that's what's going to decide and help you make that decision of where you're going to invest your money. And let me start with the passive side, because I think the majority of Americans should be a passive investor. And the reason why is because most people think investing is I'm going to go out and find the next Google or the next Amazon, or the next Apple. And when the majority of people try to do that, they end up losing money. Why? Because maybe even you found a good company, maybe you don't have the psychology to hold on to your investments. When the 2000.com bubble burst, the Amazon stock fell by over 90%. So if you hypothetically had invested $10,000 into Amazon before the bubble burst, that means you had to see your $10,000 go down to $9,000, to $8,000 to $6,000, down to $4,000, down to $3,000, down to $2,500, down to $1,500, down to almost $1,000, and still held on for you to see the returns of what Amazon became today. Most people don't have the psychology or the financial education to hold on to an investment through that downturn and then actually know if that investment is still a good investment or not. Amazon could have gone bankrupt, in which case if you sold out, it would have been a good decision, but they didn't. And this is where now, are you willing, number one, to have the psychology to go through the ups and the downs and the emotions and the roller coaster and not panic, not get greedy when things are high, not get emotional and sell when things are low? And then number two, do you have the time, ability, and interest to actually learn how to keep up with an investment, to learn what is this company doing, to learn how they're innovating, to study the executives of a company, to study their cash flow statements and their income statements and their balance sheets. Are you interested in doing that? You don't have to know all of it today, but you have to be willing to learn that as well because that's what's going to allow you to accelerate your returns. Most people are just investing in random companies 
and then hoping that this company goes up. And sometimes it will, other times it won't. But this is where your job is now to decide what type of investor that you want to be. So if you don't want to do all that work of researching the individual companies, then the next thing is how can you be a passive investor? And now what passive investing is from broad level, whether it's stocks or real estate, is you're going to create a system where now every so often, every month, every two weeks, every week, you pick the cadence, but every so often money is going to automatically leave your checkings account and it's going to be invested into an asset class. And this could be whatever you want. So for me, I'll tell you exactly what I do. I don't recommend what I do to anybody. I'm just telling you what I do. I have a passive investing system that happens in the stock market, in cryptocurrency, and into physical gold. For me, every Wednesday, and there's no secret sauce as to why I picked Wednesday. I just pick Wednesday because it's in the middle of the week. Every Wednesday, I have cash that leaves my checkings account and it gets invested into my portfolio of ETFs. I'm going to explain what that means in just a second. So it gets invested into the stock market every Wednesday for me, whether the market's up, whether the market's down, and nothing changes. In fact, the only time I might change this is if we're going through a downturn in the economy, then maybe I'll invest more. That's it. I don't change it otherwise, whether the market's up or down. What the mistake that a lot of people make here is when you see market downturns, they stop buying. That's the time where you should be buying more, if anything. Then in the cryptocurrency space, I have a passive investing system where I buy a little bit of crypto every single day. Now, I'm not going into a lot of the smaller coins. I'm just buying mainly Bitcoin and Ethereum. Again, I understand it. I understand that it's speculative. I understand that it can go to zero and it's a small piece of my total portfolio. Don't copy what I do, but if that's something that you want to do, you have to understand if it makes sense for your portfolio. So for me, I have a system where I'm buying a little bit of Bitcoin and Ethereum every day. And then I have a third passive investment, which is where I buy physical gold every month. Again, this is active. I'm not talking about gold certificates, paper gold, gold stocks. I'm talking about physical gold. There are platforms that will allow you to passively buy more physical gold. And then for me, every time I uh, accumulate enough physical gold to get a physical gold bar, it gets shipped out to me. That's what I do. So now, how do you actually do this practically? Let me focus in on the stock market side of things. In the stock market, the way that I do it, is I invest my money into ETFs, which are exchange traded funds. See, when you go out and you invest in the Amazon stock, you're investing in the Amazon business. You're investing in one company. If Amazon grows, you make a lot of money. If Amazon goes bankrupt, you lose everything. But if you're going to be passively investing, I'm not researching which individual companies are being invested because it's passive. So now the alternative is you can invest in a fund. There are ETFs, which is one version of them. There are index funds. There are mutual funds. Each one of these works similarly, but a little bit different at the same time. Index funds are generally passively managed, meaning they're generally an algorithm, which creates a type of fund that you can invest in, which means the fees are generally lower. Mutual funds are generally actively managed, which means you generally have a money manager that's working to actively buy and sell stocks for that fund. Your fees are generally higher, but the goal with the mutual fund is to get high enough returns to justify paying the fees. Your job is to figure out what type of fund that it is that you want to invest in. ETFs are a hybrid of index funds and mutual funds where they trade just like regular stocks. Some of them are passively managed. Some of them are actively managed. I just like the flexibility that comes with ETFs. That's why I invest in them. So in my ETFs, I have a simple system where every Wednesday, Money gets pulled out of my checkings account and it's automatically invested. Now, what types of ETFs am I investing in? I have four general categories of ETFs. Number one, my largest is my dividend portfolio of ETFs. These are funds that are primarily focused on generating cash flow for me, dividends or cash flow. Number two are my value ETFs. These are investing in uh, the broader, stronger, been around long time companies, things like the S&P 500. So I have ETFs to give me exposure to that. Third, I have the innovation. This is more on the risky side, more on the speculative side. This is more of like the growth side and more ups and down side. So the smaller third one is, is innovation ETFs. And then the fourth one is emerging markets. These are countries and companies overseas that aren't so reliant on the United States and the United States dollar as a little bit of a hedge. So every Wednesday, money gets pulled out of my checkings account and it gets distributed to this portfolio of ETFs. I have uh, my daily cryptocurrency buys, and then I have the monthly physical gold buys. 
but I'm also an active investor as well. I actively invest my money into my own business, Briefs Media. I actively invest my money into physical real estate, and I actively invest my money into stocks and startups. So to give you kind of a picture of what my portfolio looks like. Again, I'm going to say this one more time. I do not recommend what I do to anybody. This is just as an example for you. The bulk of my total portfolio is for cash flow. 2% of my total portfolio is physical gold. 18% is what I call speculative. And when I say speculative, what I mean is that's my cryptocurrency and that's my startups. These are my more fun investments that could go completely to zero or could grow a lot. I like it, and that's why I invest in it, but I also understand that it's speculative. The other 80% is my real estate and stocks. So now when I invest in physical real estate, what I'm looking for is cash flow again. And when I invest in real estate, what I do is I'm looking for properties, single family homes, apartment complexes, doesn't really matter what it is, where I can get a 7% cash on cash return on my money. Meaning if I invest $10,000 today, of my own money, that I'm gonna get $700 of profit a year from my money. And this is where the common emotion is, wait, that means if I invest 100 grand, I'm only making $7,000 a year in cash flow. That's not a lot of money, and you're right. The misconception about investing is that investing is gonna make you rich. No, that's not how it works. You gotta make money build this money and then take this money, use it to buy assets. That way you can continue to get paid. And that's the mindset shift that you have to make because right now most people are just reliant on their salary. I want you to be reliant on your assets, which means you got to make money, buy the assets, have the assets produce money for you, and then use that money to live off of. It's not going to happen overnight. This is a lifetime process. But that's the goal. So when I invest in real estate, I'm looking for that type of return. That way I can build a cash flow. I'm also investing in individual companies, stocks and the stock market. But this time, now it's not happening automatically. Now I'm looking for good deals. This is where if I see something like a market crash, or if I see a company get hit really hard, or if I see an undervalued company that I want to invest in, that's when I will go out and actually invest in that particular company. So it takes more time, takes more effort, takes more research. And then the companies that I have invested in, I'm keeping up with them as well. I'm looking at what are they doing on their earnings. I'm looking at how they're performing. I'm looking at their financial statements because I want to keep up with the companies that I'm invested in. And then I also invest in startups. This was something that I got into around the pandemic time. Uh, it was more of like a fun thing for me because... I like entrepreneurs. I like, I mean, I like working with entrepreneurs. I love supporting them. So this gave me an opportunity now to help support entrepreneurs financially. And I'm also fortunate where I can also help provide distribution for entrepreneurs because I have a large audience here on YouTube. And then I have briefs media, which also gives me distribution through my own newsletters. So I got into it in 2020 and it's interesting because when you invest in startups, it's very different than really anywhere else because you're kind of investing a little bit in the shadows. Because when you're a startup versus a public company, startups don't have to give you a lot of financial information until you ask for it, right? Public companies have to disclose quarterly how their financials are doing. They have to tell you how they think the economy or their company is going to do in the next quarter. They have to give you a bunch of intense financial statements. Startups, it's much more kind of not public information. So you have to pull some of that out. And so it's also risky because these are companies that are much smaller. And so if you're investing in startups, you have to understand that 9 out of 10 startups are statistically going to fail. But the goal is to find that 1 out of 10 company that will make up for all those losses. So it's something that I enjoy. It's not a huge piece of my portfolio, but it's something that I got into during the pandemic. So now your goal is to, number one, figure out what type of investor do you want to be? Do you want to be more on the active side or do you want to be more on the passive side? Then you got to figure out how is it that you want to get paid? Do you want to get paid more from cash flow or for appreciation? Right? I've been talking primarily about cash flow because that's what I like. But you can invest your money into stocks for appreciation. There are different types of ETFs or index funds or mutual funds that you will look at. 
There's different types of stocks you would look at as an active investor. So now, if you know you want to be a passive investor who wants appreciation, that's going to guide the way that you're investing your money and what you're investing in. If you want to be an active investor for cash flow, then that's going to change how you invest your money and what you're investing in. And that is then going to give you the ability to guide your investment decisions. The mistake that a lot of people make is they just give their money to a money manager and they say, hey, can you manage my money for me? And sometimes, not every time, but sometimes your money manager is going to have their financial interests higher than yours. And this is where your job is to be financially educated enough that if you have a money manager, you can ask the right questions and you can make sure that their interests are aligned with yours because you want them to make money for you before they make money for themselves. That's the key for you as an investor is to just make guided decisions. Investing is not rocket science, but you have to be willing to get started and you have to be willing to learn. And you also got to be willing to make a mistake and take risks because without that, you're never going to get started. And if you never get started, you're never going to learn. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you got to do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.